Welcome FOB Youth. This is Pastor Cody checking in with you. I hope you guys have had a great, great Wednesday so far. It's beautiful weather outside. Um, I can look through the, uh, the front doors of our church and it is just wonderful outside. So I hope you guys, you know, with your days off, um, you guys are taking the time to enjoy uh, what God has gifted us. And I am excited for this week, for tonight. Why? Because we have finished our last series and we are jumping into uh, our new series, which is called Why Not Now? And so we're starting that this week, but I want to give kind of an overview of the series and then I'll dive into what we're talking about today. So the Why Not Now series that we're doing um, is something that I want to uh, challenge us during this quarantine. Um, you know, why not now? I don't want it to just be a, a phrase of, oh, why not now? Or why not then? Or why not this? Or why not that? But I want it to be a posture that every student and leader and parent can have during this coronavirus um, pandemic and quarantine season that we're going through. Uh, my heart in this series is for every student to, to seize every opportunity, but not just students, you know, parents alike, leaders, myself included, is to seize every opportunity that is given to impact the world for Jesus. That's what we're called to do, right? We're called to impact the world for Jesus. And so each message in this series will focus in on four different narratives in the Bible that will demand something from us as leaders and from our students. Uh, this series will be setting up the momentum uh, for the rest of the school year, for the rest of the year, um, as we're not having school anymore, um, that this can be a posture, this can be a, um, you know, a challenge to push momentum going into summer, going into the end of this COVID-19 season. Just like quarantine is setting up for the rest of the year, your perspective, your your priorities, your thoughts, your values will all be made in the direction and the choices that you're making now um, for the rest of the year is the basis, the foundation is what we're doing now. So if you are students at home watching 16 hours of Netflix a day, or you're watching Netflix and TV and playing video games and being on Snapchat, and you're not taking time for Jesus, that's going to set up the rest of the school year for the rest of, um, not just the rest of this school year, for the beginning of next school year, for the rest of the summer, for the rest of the year. Things that you're putting in place now will be a result later down the road. So it is important of how we're doing it now. Why not we do it now rather than waiting till later? And so our first message in this series is talking about, it's titled, Stand Tall. And what we're focusing in on tonight, today, this Wednesday is the first week we're focusing on the narrative of Stephen and how he stood up for his faith. But not only that, but he saw Jesus standing next to the throne of God in heaven to honor Stephen's martyrdom or martyrdom in return. So, Stephen stood up for his faith, got persecuted, and was literally stoned because of it. But in that, he saw Jesus standing as he was becoming a martyr for his faith. So the why not now demand or the, the win, the point of tonight is for students to make their stand for Christ with the full knowledge that Jesus is standing for them. The time for them to stand is now. The time for us to live our faith out is now. Not later, but it's now. And so we're focusing in on the book of Acts, chapter 6 and chapter 7. Um, and so when we decide to take a stand or not to take a stand, because there's two choices. You can either stand up for your faith or you won't. There's no in-between. You can't be like, kneeling or like squatting you have to be you either stand or you're not um, you're lukewarm or you're not lukewarm you're either hot or you're cold there's no in between with God 
And so when you decide to or not to, your life tells a story louder than any words you could ever speak. There's the saying, you know, you talk the talk, but you don't walk the walk. So when you say things, if you're not backing it up or even leading it with how you're acting or your, your, your actions, how the way you live, your words will be useless. Your words will be meaningless. Words are powerful. Yes, let me tell you, they are powerful. But even more powerful is the life you choose to live is the way that you're directing. And you know, I don't wanna focus in, I'm not talking about grave tending life where you're only focused is on the end goal, the end where you're focusing on the end times or focused on one aspect. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a, a life that overflows so much that everyone and everything is impacted in its way or in its wake and they're changed forever. This is the kind of life that, that Jesus promised you long ago, promised me, promised us long ago. And it's the kind of life that he expects us to begin to live. So even when others may threaten to tear us down, God is calling us to take a stand. He told us that life isn't going to be easy. And it's going to cost us in the long run. I know for me, you know, when I had to choose between the world and, and God, when I chose God, there were things that were, that were stripped of me. Or, you know, there were things that had to be changed in me where I had friends leave. I had, you know, um, relationships be broken. I had things happen that, you know, was not the easiest or didn't feel the best, but it was worth it in the end. And so as we move into the story of Stephen, we're going to look at a little bit of, you know, who was he? Does anyone remember who Stephen was in the Bible? And so if you don't, he was, a little backstory, he was one of the men chosen to help distribute welfare or food or um, goods to the Greek widows. Um, and so in that, he was, he was also a martyr, which is basically he died for his faith. Um, and he was persecuted. And so this is found in Acts chapter 6, and it kind of goes to the beginning of chapter 7. And so we look at Acts chapter 6 through 7-1. I'm going to kind of paraphrase it a little bit. But um, So Stephen was a man full of grace, faith, power, and the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, he, he did great wonders and miraculous signs among the people. He, he was known for, for knowing Jesus. And some men, he began to argue with, or not him, but they began to argue with Stephen. And they couldn't stand up to his wisdom or the spirit by whom Stephen spoke about or spoke through. And so what did they do? They seized him. They, they arrested Stephen and brought him before the courts. And so when they brought him before the courts, they produced false witnesses where they would lie about the things that he supposedly said. And so all who were sitting in the courtroom looked intently at Stephen as he's, he's called to give his case. And they, they asked him, but when they were asking him a question, all they saw was a face of an angel. And so when they asked him this question, he had to respond. And so the question that they asked was, are these charges true? And his response is legendary. His response is something that you know we're going to look at a little bit later, but um, it's incredible the response he gives. And so what I want to do right now is I want to focus in on uh, something else, and it's it's this: is you are called by God, who has a purpose for your life that is greater than just you. Let me say that again: you are called by God, who has a purpose for your life. That is greater than you, greater than yourself. Stephen's decision to be sold out for Jesus came before he was unpopular. He decided to stand for Jesus well before anyone disagreed with him or hated him or brought him to trial. And because of that decision, before any of that happened, 
He was filled with power. He was filled with, with grace, with faith, and, and even with the Holy Spirit. And you can look at that in Acts chapter 6, verse 8, when it says he was a man full of grace, faith, power, and the Holy Spirit. But let me tell you this, is you will not get those things when you need to take a stand. You will get them before you need to take a stand so that you can stand up. So God equips us for everything we need before we need it, but it's up to us to choose to stand. Choose, yes, I'm all in, or no, I'm not to hide. So if we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 54 through 58, it backs up that claim. And it says this, Therefore, my dear brothers, stand what? Firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that work for Jesus moves mountains. Are you able to stand firm? Are you? Because when you stand up, when you stand firm, there will be persecution. We better plan on it. There will be people who disagree with us. We need to plan on that. There will be people who hate us. We need to plan on it. And then we need to get over it. What did I say? We need to plan on people persecuting us, calling us out, disagreeing with us, even maybe hating us, and then get over it. Don't focus in on that. That's what the enemy wants you to focus in. He wants to say, hey, look at all these people who are against you. Maybe you shouldn't be doing what you're doing. But then Jesus is saying, look at all those people going against you. They did the same thing to me. And so you're moving in the right direction. And so even on that, we need to get over it. And, and this story of Stephen can show us how to get over it. Because in, in chapter 7, verse 59, towards the end, it says this, as he's dying for his faith because of these people, as they stoned him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Not only that, but he's, it says he fell to his knees shouting, Lord, don't charge them with this sin. Imagine the faith, the, the power of the Holy Spirit at work in you, the choice that you have to make to say, as you're dying for your faith, as people are throwing stones at you, will you... Say, Lord, I'm not going to hold this against them. Please don't let you do that either. Are we going to say, I'm going to not focus in on that. I'm going to move on. I'm going to get over the persecution. I'm going to get over the disagreements. I'm going to get over the people that hate me. I'm going to focus in on you. Why is that important? Is because when we are serving Jesus, it's not about chasing a spiritual high. What do I mean by that? It's not about, you know, everything's going perfect. Everything's moving in the right direction. We're feeling like Jesus is moving mountains before us. We're at camp. We're at um, youth service when we're able to meet. We're at breakaway, and God is just falling in the room. And all of a sudden, we get out of that, and we're glowing. And then we go back home, and we miss that. And so we try and reach for it, reach for it, reach for it, reach for it, and we never quite get it. But we're always trying to chase that next spiritual high. No, that's not what serving Jesus is all about. Yes, we're, we're in need of encounters with Jesus, but it's not that. It's, it's this. It is about taking a spiritual stand. That no matter what happens, I'm going to stand firm. Why is that? Because... You know, when you're reaching for that next spiritual high, you're ebbing and flowing just like waves in the sea. You're going one direction, and then you're going the complete other direction. And so if we don't stand for Jesus and the foundation, we will fall for everything else. We'll go after this pastor. We'll go after that pastor. We'll go after this motivational speaker. We'll go after this word of knowledge. We'll go after this um, story in the Bible or aspect in the Bible that's been skewed thinking it's truth. But if we don't know the truth, which is Jesus and the word of the Lord, 
but is confirmed by Jesus, confirmed in the word, if we're not rooted on that foundation, we're going to be going to all of these different things trying to find that next spiritual high. That's why you have people who jump from church to church to church because they get so overwhelmed by the, the spirit in one church, but then, you know, maybe it's a dry season for them. So then they feel like they need to go to another church to experience that high and experience the Holy Spirit. But it's really just them not taking a stand for Jesus. Because when we stand for Jesus, we're willing to go through the dry seasons to get the nourishment that we need from God. And so if we don't stand for Jesus, we will fall for everything else. And this is where Jesus made, or not Jesus, this is where Stephen, sorry about that, made his decision. And it's where he became sold out for the cause of Christ. It was before position. It was before authority. It was before persecution. He made that decision by himself. And so when he made this decision to be all in, to stand firm for Christ, any cowardice, any cowardly thought was melted away and instead was boldness was planted in him as he grew a backbone and became brave and followed Jesus. Why? Because Jesus will give us that strength to keep pushing through. He knew this thought that, you know, persecution was coming. That, that if he opened his mouth back then, if he opened his mouth about Christ, he would most likely be stoned. He, he would most likely be imprisoned. He knew that. But he also knew that if he backed out now, that every believer watching him would do the same. And so he made, not his family, not his friends, not even his youth pastor, he made a decision, and it's the same decision that we need to make tonight. And it's a decision made with the understanding that we need to take a stand for Christ. And we have two options. We have the easy route, which is, you know, hiding. And we have the route that will cause persecution and, you know, a little trial here and there and maybe some big trials. But not only that, but it's made with the, the understanding that the only way to keep, to keep rocks or, you know, jabs or disagreements or people hating us from being thrown at us is to hide under the rock. I, I think of this, this uh, picture in my mind of SpongeBob and Patrick, and Patrick literally lives under a rock. And that's kind of what I picture us. If we don't stand up for Jesus, we're like Patrick hiding under the rock, acting like everything is okay, but really we're in the darkness and we're choosing the easy route out. And so when we choose to hide under the rocks, your life is spent running from your destiny, running from your calling. And that's worse than any rock or any persecution that can come our way. It's the decision to take a stand or hide under a rock is what we need to make tonight. And so Stephen was not about to let that happen, not about to let his destiny, his calling from Jesus be undermined by him and his feelings or emotions or the hard things that he might have to face. They asked him if these accusations were true. And like I said, his, his response was legendary. It was awesome. Why? Because he replied, not with a defense for himself, but a sermon about Jesus. He literally recounted Abraham, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Joshua, and David's story, and then calls them out for how they're living. And at the end, when he calls them out, he does it in a way that is so not, you know, not just his knowledge, it's definitely God's knowledge. And so 
he, he says this, and he, he goes on, and I'll even tell you where this is found. And so it, it's in Acts chapter 7, and you can look at his response in after they ask the question, are these accusations true in verse 1 in, in chapter 7? His reply in chap, or chapter 7 verse 2 all the way to the end is, is this. He says, brothers and fathers, listen to me. Our glorious God appeared to our ancestor Abraham in Mesopotamia before he, he settled. And he goes on to recount Abraham's story. And then he goes into Jacob and Joseph and Moses and Joshua and David. And then at the very end in verse 51 through 60, he says, You stiff-necked people um, with uncircumcised hearts and ears, you are just like your fathers. Why? Because you always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your fathers did not persecute? So he's calling them out for all the prophets before them that were persecuted for their belief, for what they've done. And they even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him, being Jesus. You who have received the law that was put into effect through the angels, but not, have not obeyed it. When they heard this, they were furious because he was calling them out for what they have done. And so as they were, he was saying this, and calling them out, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said this, look, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they rushed at him and dragged him out to the city and began to stone him. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, so imagine rocks being thrown at you, and he's praying. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell to his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep and died. So what I found the most interesting thing in this passage is, is not what Stephen said, but it's what Jesus did. Every place you look in scripture, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. There is no other place you can look in the word where Jesus is standing except here. And so when Jesus usually sits at the right hand of God, but when his, one of his saints die, he stands. And so when a king stands in the throne room, everyone present stands as well. So everyone was standing for, for Stephen as he was dying for the cause of Christ. And so what I want you as students, staff, parents, myself alike, to remember is when you stand up for Christ, nothing, not one thing can stand against you. Why? Because Jesus is standing for you. He's standing for me. So the perfect time to stand for Jesus is every time. Why? Because nothing can come against us, even if it means death. Why? Because we have eternal life. So my question is, when was the last time you stood up for something? When was the last time you really took a stand for what you believed in in Christ? It didn't matter who disagreed. It didn't matter what people said. They may have teased you. They may have called you out. They may have bullied you. But all that mattered to you was that you stood your ground for Christ. When was the last time you did something like that? Serving Jesus is like that. So let the sticks fly. Let the stones fly. Let the haters hate. Why? Because you have something bigger and stronger in your life than any of those things. And you are not about to back down. I believe in you. Jesus is fighting for you. And so as we close today, as we close this week, our week one of why not now, I want to do this. I want to say, why not now? Why not now that we stand in the gap for those on the front lines of COVID-19 in the medical field, in distribution, in transportation, and teachers alike, people who are, you know, all of a sudden affected by this. 
in teenagers' lives, in families' lives. So I want to pray for those uh, in the medical field, the distribution or transportation field, and teachers. Because they and their jobs are so crucial and so affected by this right now. But what I want you to do, teenagers, parents, friends, FOBU fam, I want you to do this, is I want you to either tag one of them who is in the medical field, transportation or distribution field, so like FedEx, UPS, mail, um, anything like that, or a teacher that you know. And I want you to either tag this sermon, I want you to share it with them, or I want you to message someone that you know to listen to this on YouTube or on Facebook in our group. Um, whatever avenue you need to, but I want you to tag someone you know that's in the medical field, transportation or distribution, or a teacher. Why? Because I want us to pray for them and stand in the gap for them. And I want them to know that we're standing for them and fighting for them as they are fighting for us. So please, 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 FOBU fam, do that for me. And let's pray together for them. So let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for this week, for this new series that we're standing tall for you, God. But likewise, when we stand tall for you, things start to happen. Miracles start to work. Things start to happen that we've never seen before. And so as we are on the forefront of this COVID-19, that it, it is still running rampant in Iowa and all around the world. There's some places it hasn't even peaked yet, God. So I pray for everyone in the medical field right now. Lord, as they are fighting for us, as they are trying to um, just be there for the people who are hurting, trying to um, nurse them back to health, as they're trying to help them get back on their feet and, and stay healthy, Lord, I pray for the health of every medical uh, physician, every doctor, every nurse, every um, volunteer that is working at hospitals right now um, in Cedar Rapids, in Iowa, and in the world. God, I wanna fight for them. I wanna pray that you keep their families and you keep them healthy. But Lord, I pray that their hands would be filled with your supernatural blessing and power, God, that as they are touching these patients, as they're um, trying to save these patients that are um, being affected by COVID-19 and other things, uh, Lord, that when they place their hands or come into a room, God, I pray the presence of God would come with them and heal those patients in the hospitals, in those um, temporary uh, pop-up hospitals that they've been uh, creating, God. Lord, I pray for their families as they've been giving up time with their, their loved ones. And Lord, I pray for safety for them as these nurses and doctors and volunteers are coming back home. Lord, I pray COVID-19 have no authority or no uh, reign in those families' lives. Lord, that they would not bring it back home at all. It would be killed on the way back from their job. Lord, I also pray for anyone that is in transportation or distri distribution, God, in FedEx, UPS, um, the post office, anything that is transporting goods, um, Lord, that you would keep them safe, Lord, that you would help them and give them strength and watch over them and their families as well. And then I want to lift up the teachers, God. Lord, as the teachers are now out of, out of a job, basically, and until next, um, or this fall, until next school year, God, I pray, Lord, that they would find creative ways to, to reach their, their students. But also, Lord, I pray that you would help them in this time of uncertainty, Lord. Help them help their students. And Lord, I pray for those students that these teachers can't um, have that contact with, that they, they can't love on them, they can't share the, the word of God through their actions or their love, um, Lord, that they are um, at the mercy of their families and um, their family lifestyles, God. Lord, I pray that those teachers would be fighting and praying and loving on these, these students as much as they can from a distance, God. And I pray for those family situations, Lord, that you would help make them the best and healthiest relationships you can during this season. I pray that in Jesus' name, amen. Nurses, doctors, transportation, distribution people, teachers, we love you. We're fighting for you. Uh, and this is FOBU fam, and we are one family fighting for those affected by this. We love you. I hope you guys love this. Tune in, tag someone, share it with anybody you think needs to know this. We love you, and we'll see you next week.